The second aim in this experiment is, is to find out an unknown mass. So here you will be doing the same experiment that you did in the first part so that you will be calculating m by m square. That is in transverse mode as well as in the longitudinal mode you will evaluate the loop length and find out m by l square. You will find that it is constant for the transverse mode and it will be a different constant for longitudinal mode. Here also we will be setting the circuit in a similar manner and taking the readings in the transverse mode as well as the longitudinal mode with known masses as we did for the first aim and additional to this we will be repeating the experiment by replacing this known mass with the unknown mass. So first you will do the experiment with known mass as we did for the first aim then additional to that we will be doing the experiment by changing this known mass with an unknown mass. So with this unknown mass, we will again find out the loop length. Coming to the observations, we will repeat the same experiment and see that m by l square is constant for transverse mode. Now, we will change or replace this known mass with an unknown mass. Then we will evaluate what is the loop length with the unknown mass. For example, here I have taken it as the loop length or length of one loop with the unknown mass as 0.3. Now knowing that m by l square is a constant value in the transverse mode, knowing that the loop length is 0.3 meter, we can back calculate and find out what is the m. Once again, we know that m by l square is a constant value. Now we have got the l value as 0.3 for an unknown mass. So you can back calculate from the constant value what is your m of the unknown mass. So this will be the theory behind calculating the unknown mass. The same thing is applicable to longitudinal mode. You would have already got a constant value for m by l square with known mass. Now with an unknown mass find out what is the loop length for one loop and back calculate what would be the mass unknown mass from this constant value making use of this constant value of m by l square. In this part it is also possible to draw a graph between m and l square and with a linear relationship of m and l square. From the graph also you can calculate your unknown mass m. So this would be the procedure. So this is a sample graph. Here you plot your different values of m and the corresponding l square m and l square m and l square and you draw the graph m by l square it will be a straight line so this comes from the first aim of the experiment also and additionally with for the purpose of the second aim of finding unknown mass what we have done is we have found out the loop length l for the unknown mass for Simplicity, I have taken L square as 0 0.06. This corresponds to L square of unknown mass. So, from this graph, I can find out what is the mass of the mass corresponding to this L square, and this will be the mass of unknown mass. So from the linear graph of m by ml square graph, you can find out what is the mass corresponding to the unknown mass. Here we are using this unknown mass. We are using this as an unknown mass 
and we will find out what is the mass of this body. I have hanged this or suspended this unknown body, unknown mass at the end of the thread. So with this unknown mass, I will repeat the transverse mode of vibration as well as longitudinal mode of Melde strain and find out the loop length. That is length of one loop in transverse mode as well as length of one loop in the longitudinal mode just as we did in the first part of the experiment.